Salut les swing dancers, c'est Julien pour Blabla Swing. Aujourd'hui, on a la chance euh, géniale de rencontrer Robin, Robin, le percussionniste du groupe euh, Les Tubaskini. So, Robin, est-ce que tu peux nous parler un petit peu de toi, qui tu es euh, Je joue le François Lavé dans le groupe Tubaskini, euh, environ de, bien de Nouvelle-Orléans. Euh, on joue la euh, musique de la 1920s, jazz. Aussi, euh, la musique de Jug Band et euh, Country Blues dans euh, euh, les États-Unis. Tu, tu es dans le groupe depuis les. C'est un groupe donc qui date de 2009. Tu étais dans le groupe dès le début euh, Je ne comprends pas. Um, have you been in a, uh, in a band from the mm. start um, De la début, yeah. Um, uh, yes, I have. Wow. Yeah, um, the band started in, not the very complete start, but pretty much, um, the band started in 2009 during French Quarter Fest, um, and then uh, that summer uh, of 2009, the band traveled to France and biked down the coast of uh, the Atlantic coast of France into Spain, and then when they returned to New Orleans in the fall, I joined them. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, you you play the washboard in the band. Mm -hmm. uh, are you also playing other instruments? Uh, yeah, I also play the drums and I play violin and mandolin. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm working on it, but. <laughs> I, I saw also that um, uh, Shay, the trumpetist. Yeah. Um, play also piano. Oh yeah. Is it um, something for for you in New Orleans that every musician is able to play a lot of instruments? Not every musician in New Orleans can play multiple instruments, but in our community, we push each other to learn more music, other genres of music uh, than just jazz or old time music, but uh, also to learn other uh, instruments as well. Uh, to be skinny, before we started playing jazz, a lot of us played in other groups uh, that were doing more like string band music, uh, Eastern European music. Um, Americana, yeah. Americana, nice. Um, can you explain for, for us the, the meaning of the, um, the title of the band, Tubaskini? Where did it come from? Yeah, um, so let's see. Uh, Tubaskini, uh, twice a week we busk on Royal Street, which has a pedestrian mall uh, in the middle of the French Quarter. It's kind of the main artery of the town, Royal Street. Um, anyway, so in the mornings, uh, the band would, or the band often bikes into the French Quarter to busk and hold the spot. And uh, I guess a long time ago when he first started, our tuba player, um, he's still very skinny, but he was definitely skinny back then. And uh, I think he told me one time when he was biking, into the quarter, someone yelled up at him like, hey, what are you, Tuba Skinny? And that is in reference to Tuba Fats, who was a great musician from New Orleans. Uh, he died right before Hurricane Katrina, but he fought for street performing rights in New Orleans and made it so that we have as much freedom as we do today to busk there. But there are many fights for street performing uh, in New Orleans. It's always ongoing. Okay. Yeah. So, the New Orleans is really famous for to be the birth of jazz. Yeah, yeah. When you used to say that because it's true. And um, is it uh, some kind of responsibility for you to to continue to play <coughs> these old standards and uh, to spread the word? Um, I guess I guess at this point the band's been together for 10 years and we get a lot of notoriety for playing old music. Um, So I think people put the responsibility on us. People look to us to pull out old songs that uh, maybe have been forgotten. Um, but there are so many groups doing it today. So, um, you know, it's not just us. We don't maybe feel the responsibility ourselves. Um, but we do feel the need to play the music because it's so much fun. Yeah. And uh, honestly, playing this old jazz, it feels very grounding, centering for me personally, and I think for other musicians in the band because 
there are two really special things about uh, old jazz music. Uh, first off, um, it was uh, it was full of ensemble, where the group plays together. There will be solos, but underneath the soloist, the band will play rhythms and supportive uh, harmonies uh, underneath that solo. Whereas in later jazz, it'll be just one instrument soloing. But also, something I really appreciate about Tuba Skinny and about bands from back in the days, they'll play very um, simply, they'll play less, uh, nonetheless together. So. Me, as a washboard player, I have my role. Uh, Todd on tuba, he has his role. The melody section, they have their harmonic roles. Um, and when we bring all of our simple roles together, we create a big sound. And it's like playing on a baseball team. Uh, we have to work together. Yeah. And um, last night, we, we can have the pleasure to see you playing in Marseille with uh, another French uh, band called Louise and the Pro Boys. Yeah. And they, they used to play um, New Orleans music. Yeah. And we we can hear really clearly when each musician have, has his part. Yeah. And it was really um, nice. And after the concert, my girlfriend told me, oh, it will be a nice for musicality class to to explore to Baskini music. Oh. Say, oh, you see that it's the, the tuba now. Now it's the guitar playing now, and it's really easy to to see it. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of other bands, um, so last night you played with with the Pop Boys, really famous for us because we live in the south. Yeah. Um, do you know uh, other jazz French band? Oh know? yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. <laughs> I've been coming to France uh, for years and years now. I love France, but I always make a point to visit Montpellier. Uh, there are so many amazing and especially younger uh, jazz bands there. Uh, one of my favorites uh, are uh, the Cannibal Dandies. Yeah. What a name. But um, I actually was uh, fortunate enough, um, I was living in set last month for a little bit, and I... I went up to Montpellier to play a gig with them, and they welcomed me, and I got to know them, and we had so much fun. They felt like um, a family I, I hadn't met yet. Yeah. Um, there's some other groups out of Montpellier. It's hard to keep up with all of them. Yeah, um, they're, definitely they're, the Sweet Peppers. They're yeah. they're a great group of musicians. I met them at uh, the Fest of Jazz uh, a couple of years ago in Chateauneuf de Feu, Brittany, mm -hmm. and uh, they're lovely people. You, you know also maybe the Carolina Reapers? Uh, I've heard the name. It's pretty much the Sweet Peppers. Oh, okay. With a um, piano. Oh, okay. Cool. And uh, it, it's, it's Joseph from Montpellier. Oh, very boy. Famous. And yeah, he played on the Carolina Reapers. Are you talking about Joseph Vuvan? Yes, exactly. Yeah, oh. This guy. Joseph is the best, yeah. I love his uh, b banjo playing. Maybe at the time you, you, you know also Magic. Shuket. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. With Arno and a lot of people like that. Yeah, yeah. But in Montpellier, it's really alive. Yeah, uh, it's so inspiring. Yeah. yeah man. I would really like to move to France, and I think I'd move to Montpellier. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, it would be awesome for us. Yeah. And um, one of my last questions is about the dance. Yeah. The dancers and the musician. Yeah. Um, you are. Um, able to play for uh, a quiet audience or for dancers, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to, uh, to be on a big festival with a lot <laughs> of uh, specialists or for dancers, but sometimes they don't pay attention to music? So. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess I have experienced it where I play uh, just like some random swing dance somewhere in the world with Tuba Skinny or any jazz band, and uh, it'll seem like maybe they're just looking for that rhythm, that beat to dance to, but I feel like most of the time, especially in New Orleans, but other countries too, um, uh, the dancers are there listening uh, to our music and uh, tr trying to connect. There's usually like, a, uh, it seems like the local teachers really try to connect with the group, uh, with the band's energy. And I, I, I look to dancers all the time for new ideas. I'll, I might not understand the dance, but if I watch the feet move and maybe I hear a little bit of rhythm of a dancer's improvisation, 
um, it'll inspire me to maybe imitate yeah. or syncopate uh, rhythmically uh, of that those same steps <laughs> on the washboard. Yeah, and um, I don't know if you're aware of, of that, but uh, in France there is a lot, a lot of dancers who who like you so much. Oh, cool. They, they use a lot of Tubaskini in the um, playlist for the class or for the DJ setting. Oh, yeah, you mentioned and, last night. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, in France, you have a, a lot of people who know Tubaskini who they are. Nice. Um, yeah, so we, we, I had the chance to, to speak to you last night and um, I told you about this specialistic dance in New Orleans. I find it. It's, oh, it's yeah. Zydeco. Oh, Zydeco, okay. Do you know this song? Um, I mean, I, again, I'm not a dancer myself, but I know that Zydeco and Cajun uh, music has their special dances. Is it a music? Zydeco is a genre of music from okay, Cajun people. You speak to me about only the dance Zydeco. Yeah. Okay. I have to, to, to dig. In Zydeco is pretty cool. Um, I recently um, have been pushing myself to learn some of the rhythm from Zydeco because when I get back to the U.S. I have to play with a guy called Cedric Watson who's known for playing uh, Cajun and Creole music but he, um, in his Creole band he has a um, Fratois player uh, which um, that's like uh, similar to a washboard but um, it's a large metal piece of sheet, sheet pe sheet of metal that fits over you it looks like armor and it's ribbed but you play it with like forks or spoons or maybe a key yeah. um, but uh, it's different rhythms than the kind of wooden washboard that I play how do you say it's called? Uh, I believe uh, Fratois it's spelled F-R-O-T-T-O-I-R okay. uh, maybe it's like a Cajun derivative of a French word yeah okay and um Your, your band is, is called Tuba Skinny, but you don't play with the tuba. Well, oh, well, we do, for years and years we have played with the tuba, but uh, recently um, our tuba player, hit, I guess he likes the sousaphone, uh, so it's pretty much a tuba, except uh, it wraps around your body so yeah. you can march with it. Ah, yeah. And um, it's uh, probably louder too, and you can, Todd normally plays, a, I believe, a classical tuba, Uh, which uh, he used to sit down with, but now he's got so much groove going. He it's I think he likes to move with it. Yeah, you know, he, he almost dance with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, my last question is about the, the the swing dance in the US. Yeah. Um, uh, are you familiar with your, the other dance in the in the US? Like uh, yeah, uh, the big name Jonathan Stout. Even it's not it's not uh, New Orleans. Uh, swing music, but um, uh, um, do you have connection with them sometimes, or? Yeah, I mean, musicians, I'm sure like dancers around the world, we uh, end up meeting each other one way or another, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes we'll, different bands from different states in the U.S. will get hired to play a dance, and um, so different regional bands will meet up at a dance and we'll get to know each other, maybe have a drink after the gig or something. Um, yeah, New York's got some great dance bands. New Orleans definitely does. I know um, so many cities in America do. Uh, Portland, Seattle, L.A. has a lot of groups. The California Feet Warmers, one of my favorite bands. Um, the Blue Vipers of Brooklyn from New York, they play dances. Uh, there's so many groups. Yeah. Thank you, because yeah. uh, I will ask you to, yeah. to, to um, talk about bands you like. So oh, yeah. And um, to conclude, can we speak about the, the influences of the tuba skinny? Sure, um, yeah. What is it, who they are? Well, um, let's see. Tuba skinny is very influenced by um, a lot of the old jazz orchestras from the 1920s. Not so much the pop dance bands, although we do play at least one song by the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra. But um, we're really inspired by early Louis Armstrong's uh, Hot Fives, Hot Sevens orchestras. Um, King Oliver is a huge inspiration. Clarence Williams, uh, the pianist and music publisher. Uh, Armand G. Piron, uh, the violinist. 
Um, we, we started our uh, show last night with one of his tunes called Bouncing Around. Um, I think that was published in 1918 or something. Um, uh, also, uh, because we have Erica singing in the band, uh, she's brought a lot of music from uh, Ma Rainey, um, Sarah Martin and her jug band, uh, of course Bessie Smith, um, we even do a Billie Holiday song. Um, uh, but also we're really influenced by the country blues, Delta blues music, um, uh, and jug bands, uh, such as uh, the, the uh, Memphis Jug Band. They were a huge influence on Tuba Skinny some years ago. And I think we, I think all of us, we learned a lot about rhythm and simple yet powerful syncopation from the Memphis Jug Band. Um, we're really inspired by string band music. Maybe music that sounds kind of old and nerdy. You probably wouldn't want to swing dance to it, but um, we kind of put jazz on it, and we put our own voice on it, and we syncopate, we improvise on these old string band tunes, and it becomes a jazz number. Really, jazz is just like faster and syncopated and improvised older music, like ragtime. We're inspired by ragtime. Um, uh, in more recent years, we've been playing some R&B music, uh, such as from um, Tar Heel Slim and Lil Lan, also um, Eddie Bo, uh, Greg, one of our one of our three guitarists in the band. Um, he's not with us on this tour. He uh, sings a number of Eddie Bo and Smiley Lewis tunes in the group, which are R&B. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we're. A lot of influences. After 10 years, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last question. Yeah. Um, are you going to play any kind of man tonight? Daddy, there's a big change in your life. Why you don't treat me like you? Um, yeah, I can talk to the band about it, definitely. I, I think we can remember how to play it. I think it's on our latest album, or the one that's going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Definitely. Yeah, pleasure. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.